First, a quick overview regarding the different electron microscope analyzers from Bruca. <clears throat> These are Bruca's electron microscopes analyzer, which gives you the chance to investigate and observe the sample with different techniques out of one software suite. So without changing the sample in the SEM. We have the EBSD and TKD for crystallographic information from your sample. The micro XRF with the external X-ray source, which has a detection limit down to 10 ppm for heavier elements. The wave dispersor spectrometer WDS, specially suited for light element quantification. The standard EDS detector, the all-rounder for precise quantification, mappings, particle analysis, and so on. And the unique <coughs> Annular silicon drift detector, the so-called flat quad. A special design detector from which we will show you several fantastic application examples in this webinar. But before <clears throat> we start with the application example, let me introduce you quick the flat quad for those who haven't heard from it yet. Here we see the flat quad in detail and a special design. The flat quad is inserted between pole piece and sample, as you can see on the right top side, with a hole in the center for the primary beam. The four STD segments with an area of each 50 millimeters, so in total 60 millimeters, surrounding a hole for which the electron beam passes, as you can see on the right bottom side. Through the combination of the four channels with a maximum of 600,000 counts per second for each channel, the flat quad can handle up to 2,400,000 counts per second with a standard energy resolution of 129 electron volt for mangane K-alpha. And talking about count rate, we also need to take the solid angle into account. The higher the solid angle, the more X-rays can be detected without changing any analytical parameters. So to achieve a higher solid angle, you can increase the chip area A or decrease the detector to sample distance D. Increasing the chip area has several disadvantages. A smaller chip area, for example, needs less cooling, is lighter, which leads to higher stability and has a better takeoff angle which means in general, a higher efficiency. <clears throat> on the right side, you see some examples for typical values for the solid angle on SEM and TEM. A standard SEM has a typical side entry of around 0 0.01 stair radian to 0.1 stair radian. For EDS and STEM, they're a bit better with around 0.1 to 0.4 stair radian. And with some big area detectors like the 100 millimeter, you can reach around 0.5 stair radian. Um, the flat quad, as discussed before, combines advantages of a smaller chip area and minimized detector to sample distance. So the solid angle, which can be achieved um, by the flat quad, is 1.1 stair radian with a short working distance of 2.5 millimeters. Therefore, the flat quad combines high count rates with a large solid angle. But also equally important, a wide collection angle. So the takeoff angle in a standard setup is around 30 to 35 degrees, as you can see here on the left. Due to his special design, that the flat, flat quad is sitting above the sample, the flat quad has a takeoff angle of around 60 to 70 degrees. Furthermore, because the detector is sitting above the sample, we are avoiding shadow effects on the sample with strong topography, as you can see here on the right side. And here, for example, an older example, just to compare the difference and to see the shadowing of the standard detector. Both these measurements were acquired with the same parameters at 3 kV and 220 picograms. But on the right side, you see the map with the standard detectors that you get no signal and that you get some shadowing effects. Where in comparison, on the left, the flat quad shows nearly no shadowing. 
Furthermore, we can zoom in, as you see the green square, with the zoom function and make even smallest pores and features visible. The next example, quick for stronger topography, here is a sea urchin from the Aegean Sea in Greece. A beam sensitive sample with strongest topography where sample preparation like carbon coating was excluded. And to avoid charging, the sample had to be analyzed with the smallest aperture under low KV. So this map of <clears throat> the sea urchin was acquired in less than a minute under high vacuum of 6 kV. You can see two percals are visible on the right in turquoise, while the green and turquoise spade-like structures on the left are minuscule spines. In the center of the micrograph, individual sand grains are visible in red. And as you can see, shadow effects are minimized nearly to zero here. So sea urchins are widely used model organism for evolutionary studies in terms of genetic and morphometric analysis. Furthermore, the spatial architecture of the sea urchin is a lightweight and heavy load bearing system. So the skeleton and the structure of their sponge like shell, as we can see also in the maps on the right side, more in detail, influences researchers on new materials and architecture. The trabecular orientations reflect a construction which can resist heavy weights and can distribute this pressure over the entire skeleton. Furthermore, detailed maps can be acquired to observe even finer structures and features. Like here in this case, also crystallization of small sand grains, uh, salt grains precipitate out of the water can be observed on top of the skeleton from the sea urchin. The shadow effects are minimized due to the four SDD segments sitting on top of the sample and looking from all directions. And this brings also advantage when acquiring spectra from topographic samples, 